Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Comedian MTG. My name is Ian. Now we are currently in the year 2023, but I figured I wanted to send one last hurrah to the year 2022 and celebrate all of the cool things that we've gotten for the CEDH sub format and just talk about the best cards in every set for CEDH and break those down for you here today. Now, a little clarification before we jump right into this. The episode today will be featuring cards from every single standard set. We have Warhammer 40k, we have Unfinity, and we have the commander sets that accompany each standard set. So those are the ones that I chose as far as representing here in this video today. And we got a couple cards to break down for you here today. While you're watching this video, remember to hit like and subscribe if you enjoy videos like this. And if you're feeling extra generous, check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash comedian MTG. It helps keep the lights on and so many of things. I'm going to be restructuring my tiers for that Patreon very soon, and it's going to be some pretty exciting stuff. So and excited to see everyone check that out. Without any further ado, let's jump into these cards. So we are starting with the first set of the year Kamigawa Neon Dynasty, and it's already starting out with an exception because one of these cards could not be named the best card in the set because they're both part of the same cycle. We're talking about Baseju, who endures, and Odawara, Soaring City. These channel lands have absolutely changed the shape of the CEDH format, just specifically with like play patterns that exist now, right? Baseju and Odawara being able to to activate through things like Grand Abolisher, activate through silence effects. They've really had to like change a lot of the math that people have to go around when going through these lines that used to be like unstoppable, right? Like usually if a silence resolves, there are very few things that you could do to stop a combo. But you know, if you have a silence and then play an underworld breach, you can now besage you that breach. Or if you have a creature combo, you can use a well-timed Odawara to completely disrupt that combo. That being said, uh, these two lands have been extremely impactful to the format so far. And it's kind of crazy to see just their effect on the format as a whole. They're very strong. They're very powerful. They are super terrifying to play against against even those situations where you resolve your silence, your grand abolisher, your three mana to fairy, you have to worry about these cards just absolutely wrecking you because they just get around so many things because that's how channel works. And also the fact that they are uncounterable in the same sense and take up a land slot. Uh, just, just so many amazing things to say about this cycle. They were so insane when they were previewed and they have not disappointed. I'm very happy with these two lands. Moving on to the commander deck of this Kamigawa Neon Dynasty set, Shorikai is really like a significant amount more impactful than a lot of the other things in that commander deck. Shorikai just is probably arguably the best blue white commander to exist at the current moment and you know we've gotten a couple new cards lately especially this year that maybe can give it a contention but shorikai is kind of what took blue white off the meme level of cedh decks or at least the fringe level of cedh and brought it into a completely new light so it's really cool to see shorikai uh just be a very strong blue white option cedh make the color combination actually pretty competitive. No one's put up a result with Shorakai yet, but I'm still ambitious to see someone do that. I think there are some pretty good pilots who know how to play the deck pretty right. A, a top performance from this deck is only a couple tournaments away at least. Moving on to Streets of New Capenna. Now there are there are definitely some spicy cards we can talk about. We can talk about your Rocco Cabaretti Caterers and like uh, things like that, but like it, it is hard to argue a more impactful card than an offer you can't refuse. It is one of the best counter spells printed period i was pretty critical of this card when it first came out because i was worried in you know things like ad nauseum mirrors uh playing an offer you can't refuse and it's actually kind of funny i've been talking to people who are in like sort of a very insulated grixis space and they don't actually play this because it usually gives them uh the mana to cast their own final fortunes right so like in those spaces this card is not as good but in in a lot of other spaces this card's just kind of insane the fact that it is so efficient for only a single mana not having a limitation on the non-creatures it can hit so literally anything but a creature this can counter and the two treasure tokens while sometimes being able to refuel your opponents won't always do that and to have such an impactful piece of counter magic come out in this format one that i think like you can't really leave home without seems like a very very easy include as the number one card from streets of new capenna now obviously i'm a little biased here when saying new capenna commander the top card is tivit but despite my results with 
with this deck, it has put up multiple top 16s. At one point, Squirrel Mob's metagame breakdown had this deck at just like a ridiculous amount of the field. So it's not just myself putting up one good result with it. We've had multiple top 16s from different pilots. Uh, we've had multiple reports of this deck just being played at kind of everywhere. Uh, Tivit's a really cool deck. Um, one of my favorites right now in the format and deck that I continue to play over and over again because it's one, it's got some super fun play patterns. It's a really cool card and uh, obviously I've had some success with it. So it's a super dope card and I'm happy to nominate it as the best card from Noob Capenna Commander. When talking about Commander Legends Battle for Baldur's Gate, it is, to me, impossible to not talk about Archivist of Agma. I think this card is buck wild. The fact that it is seeing play in like four color good stuff piles, things like Blue Farm, but also able to be played in these mono white decks, giving them an insane amount of card draw comparatively to what they've been used to. I know I've talked to people who are really hot and cold about this card, but I, I legitimately draw an average of three to four cards off of this card in most games I play it. I know I've heard some people say they literally never draw off of this, and that kind of blows my mind i don't really know what cdh pods they're playing but i have consistently seen this card overperform in my games and it's legitimately just so good it allows low color white decks to really be able to have card draw when that normally isn't the case and it also just happens to be really good as just like a, a flash threat in winota as i mentioned a timna attacker and something like blue farm i'm a big big archivist of agma fan and i think this card is is very very strong i'm a, I'm a huge fan and like displacer kitten was the only real other nominee in my mind for this set and maybe delayed last fireball but it's really hard to argue that archivist of Agma has not been significantly impactful and just a solid role player in this entire time now dominary united was kind of tough for me i didn't love a ton that came out of that set and as far as like cedh playability uh shieldred's the one that is sort of jumping to the top of my mind right now. I don't know if this is quite the the most impactful card from this set, but I also, like, there's not a ton that was really impactful. There's some really cool legends that came out with this set, especially in the uh, commander variant of this set, but Shieldred, definitely, I've seen a number of mid-range decks really picking up this card. I have played against it a couple times. It has almost stopped me from winning a couple times, especially in, like, my Thrasios decks where I'm trying to draw my deck. I, I have seen it also warp the the game and the fact that it gets played and then suddenly these mid-range matches are on a clock and you have to use removal on things like Shieldred as opposed to like the threats that the, that person then uses to win the game. So Shieldred definitely has had an impact since it's printing and I would not be surprised if it continues to do so. I feel like a lot of people are treating it as an underexplored option right now and I think that's an accurate assessment. I think it's actually pretty strong and I would not be surprised to see this card be one of the most dominant things that came out of the set. Out of Dominary United Commander, it's really hard to argue that Activated Sleeper is not the best card from this set uh, as far as the Commander product goes. Um, Activated Sleeper has just added a really solid option for Protean Hulk lines. It's cleaned up a lot of lines. It's reduced the cost on a couple lines. It's added layering for a couple lines. It It's just a card that legitimately does the thing like a lot of the other cards from this commander product were just things that were like oh this has been played as a commander at some point but it's hard to argue that activated sleeper is gonna not have an impact going forward right activated sleeper is going to be a card that now will have a history to it because it is just such a clean option for protean hulk style decks i'm so sad to have to even talk about this set but unfinity it's really hard to argue anything but Saw in Half is the impactful card from this set. There's been a few things that have seen play here and there, but Saw in Half has legitimately uh, made a deck, right? Cormella exists because Saw in Half exists. That's a whole combo deck basically because of this card. I've done a little bit of work playing with this card. I've definitely, uh, I have an Evelyn list that like really relies heavily on Saw in Half because you can do some cute stuff with Evelyn and also you can Saw in Half your Dock Sides and your Spell Seekers. And it's definitely a card I think people are sleeping on a little bit. I think it's very, very powerful, and it does some pretty crazy stuff. I know the first time I got the saw in half a dock side to make like 15 treasures because there were two of them now was like insane. Obviously, 15 isn't an even number, so not that many. But <laughs> saw in half is just like a really, really cool card. I think it's a really unique effect. Um, I hate that Unfinity is a legal set, but you know that I'm not here to die on that hill. So happy to see saw in half. It's a really unique card, and I think it's added. a decent amount of stuff to the game. It's pretty cool. From Warhammer 40k, this was tough because Warhammer, I really thought was going to have more of an impact on CEDH. I think a lot of people just like aren't playing with the tools we got in that deck and or in that th those decks, I should say, uh, because there are four of them. And it's just, 
it's it's been very interesting to like analyze what has come out of that set. And I think they're don't get me wrong, a smash hit. Like they were an awesome success. They're really good for the game, but I just thought they would have more of an impact on CEDH. And now Marnius Calgar, I have seen it at multiple tournaments now. It is a really unique Esper style list. Uh, it does a really cool thing. You get to play cards like Bitter Blossom and Monastery Mentor, and it's just a really cool card. And it's the only commander from the set that I have seen at multiple tournaments. And it's uh, it's a deck, right? It has infinite mana outlet. It has the Stasis Oracle plan. It has this really cool mid-range value engine when it comes to token making. So it's a cool list. I'm excited to see people tinker around with it more. I definitely also wanted to like play around with this deck a little bit because I didn't really get a chance to do that earlier when it was printed so it's definitely really cool and i'm definitely interested to see if people continue to work on and develop this strategy so there is a lot from brothers war that i think is there's a lot of good cards in brothers war just like a little role players and things like that cards like mirel or lauren or just like all these things but just like with an offer you can't refuse i have seen soul partition in many 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 places and as someone who like plays a lot of stacks decks and talks to a lot of stacks players uh this card is just very very strong in those archetypes the fact that it is a flexible removal piece uh the fact that it's also a dockside doubler for your own stuff that if you have a draineth this is just two mana exile any non-land permanent like the the fact that it's a non-land permanent period is so flexible as an option so soul partition is just super 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 relevant i i've seen a ton of it and i think it's a really really solid card it's either an amazing tempo play or just a super efficient removal piece of two mana that is super flexible in what it can hit so just just it's hard to compare it to anything else because soul petition is just so so solid this one was tough. Brother War Commander didn't have a ton of new options that I found very appealing for CEDH. So Sardian Avenger is one that I am talking about. People have talked about playing this in Winota. I, I'm willing to test it. I did buy a copy of this to test it in Winota. I know other people were talking about it as just like anti-Dockside tech, which it does do sort of. Um, some people were talking about it in like a curiosity style shell. I am a little underwhelmed by this card. I think in Winota, at least it like, it gets really big and having for First strike and trample means that it like it is likely to be able to connect with your opponents a lot and as i mentioned being able to stop dockside loops going infinite is definitely a cute upside but it's not one that i'm super excited about i think the card's kind of just fine and i think it'll see play in some places and that folks is our wrap up for the best cards of 2022 from each set for the cedh format thank you so much for joining me on today's episode i really appreciate everyone who comes out and watches these make sure to hit like and subscribe if you want to support this channel and as i mentioned if you want to be one of these awesome people like the people who are about to be have their names in our show notes uh, go to patreon.com slash comedian mtg as i mentioned i will be restructuring the tiers soon and there's a lot of cool stuff coming on the way in addition i am um now providing coaching for cedh i've had uh four sessions so far with people doing cedh coaching and it's been a really successful enterprise so far and it's been something i've been really enjoying so feel free to dm me on on discord or twitter or any of those places if you want to find out more about that or you can hit me up on my email comedian mtg at gmail.com all right everybody thank you so much for watching this video really appreciate each and every one of you i'll catch y'all next time I, I, I can Peace. feel the blood creeping up from the heathens got will got fight got pride got reason if they want to go eat then you know i'm gonna feed them if you're coming for me hope you're ready for a demon i got eyes in the back of my head i'm seeing take me for granted and you know i'm leaving i'ma take what's mine with the webs i'm weaving i could take this crap from seeing to believing